Good morning and welcome. So how do I shoot my handicap? Well take this hole. I can't see the landing area. So I never know if I'm aiming the right way. Also I can't see the ball land. So if I do hit it offline, how am I going to find it? So that's why I hit my three hybrid. Wasn't expecting that. And even then, what I thought was perfect is in trouble. Imagine the damage I could do with a driver hitting it offline, coming over the brow of the hill, and no golf ball. Where would I start looking? As you can see, some of the greens are sanded. It's that time of year. So there's going to be a few mistakes on here. The hard part is convincing yourself to hit it hard enough. But I'm sure you know that already. And I'm sure you can predict the results of what's going to happen on greens like these. But I'm not bothered. We'll make some scores later on. First time out with the driver, but no worries, this fairway is wide enough, and even the short rough makes it quite wide. Despite the sunshine, it's the grand total of 5 or 6 degrees today. With a one club wind, that's knocking it down even further. Plus, I've been doing a lot of heavy work, I'm stiff, I'm sore. And that's something else I'm going to have to manage as we go around the golf course. What do you do when your body simply won't work like you want it to? But that's all about managing yourself, managing the course and getting the most out of it. hard to concentrate at golf when you're busting for a pee and you may have noticed there aren't too many trees up here to hide behind. I need to find a tree. Half shots with a sand wedge are not exactly my strong point. Swings too long, too slow, decelerating and very poor contact. It's a part of my game that I will be improving very soon because I can't keep going on being 15 yards short and 15 yards long when all I've got is 55 to start with not good the first driver hole where it's a little bit tighter than the rest just for once I've hit a perfect one. I couldn't get comfy over this. I wasn't feeling confident. And that's the result. Sometimes the best you can do is 10 feet past the flag. If that's all you can do, then perhaps that's all you should attempt to do. Don't ask what went wrong with the tee shot, I'm honestly not sure but we're staring down 
our third bogey of the day. And we've got the long par 4 7th to come. The one I've never parred. The difference between this hole and the first is I can see everything. I can also feel the wind. So I'm bolder here than I ever am on the first tee. I've now got a shot that I absolutely hate. It's 40 yards. And I'd rather play this with a wedge or a 9-iron along the ground than I would this sand wedge I've got in my hand. But out in Thailand with the grass, or the type of grass, and quite often it's soggy after a thunderstorm, there's no rolling the ball along the ground. You quite simply have to throw it. And I'm no good at that, even for a six handicap, which is why I'm going to have a lesson on it. 40 yards. Yeah, it doesn't always come out like that, I can assure you. The swing's too long, it's too slow, it's not brisk, short and brisk. So quite often the club head is overtaking the hands, and that's where I get my fats, and the knife that goes 120 yards. Now for the longest drive I've ever hit on this par 5. My first birdie on here. The length of number 10 doesn't bother me. I'd rather hit a wood than a long iron. Even though recently I've been hitting very weak woods, I can't find the dance floor to save my life. The trouble with switching between proper greens and sanded greens is your forever changing pace. Oh, are you kidding me? Number 11, and I've got to admit to being terrified of the deep grass down the right hand side. So I keep aiming left. What a time to hit a straight one. This rough doesn't look much, but it's damn difficult to get out of even though it's not very deep. Just got to get it on the dance floor. And that's a bit of a fail, again, because of the rough. Now out in Thailand, you can't play chip and run because of the grass. You have to 
chip it through the air. So that's another shot I need to practice. And that was almost another bird. Number 12, and the cold is getting in my bones. Can't get through it. Shove to the right. Now it gives you a good view down the green, but it's always a bit iffy coming out of the rough. It's a good job the flag's on the front. And I don't think I could have hit it well enough to get it to the back. I'm definitely timing the driver a bit better. It would have been hard to have got worse. I would normally lay up here with a six iron because there's a ditch diagonally across the fairway. My friend Paul says, take out your three wood and have a go. And I'm a bit dubious as to whether this is a good idea or not. The only way you find out is by trying. Well, I'm over the ditch by a handful of yards. I'm on an upslope. A little bit fat. Don't even make it on the green. I really don't like this choice. <laughs> I'd much rather be somewhere back down the fairway, to be honest. I don't quite get that choice, to be honest. Not unless you've hit a long drive off the yellows and you maybe got 210 to the green and you can actually reach it. But I got over that ditch by seven yards. Disaster was just waiting to happen. And then you're on an upslope with a sand wedge in your hand and it's so easy to hit it upwards instead of forwards, as you've just seen. A bit of a sweat to get a par. Yeah, I'd much rather have a, a full nine iron off a flatter lie a little further down the hill. Anyway, on to 14. The highest tee box in the UK. I think it's a full par five above sea level. this side of the fairway I can see the flag but I'm always gonna go to the right of this flag always gonna have that little bit of cushion and in a moment I'll tell you why well the light in this picture isn't very good but I wanted to show you why I went for the right half of this green because if you miss left you got this behind me. In fact, if you miss left, the ball's going to be behind you. It's going to be even harder. Look, the light's normalised now.
five wood for me today. Shot tracer wouldn't do its thing. It's a little bit tugged. It's on the bank to the left of the green and almost tumbles down onto the green. It's funny, I haven't hit this green in ages. But then it was 253 yards to the flag today. And so steeply downhill, I only needed my five wood. In the summer when it thermes up, you can run it down, but you can see the difficulty of running it down over the top of my head with all those humps and hollows and crevices. It's not a given that it'll actually reach the green. That's why I always try and fly it on. That's how you get a par on 16. One of the keys to a putt that's got a lot of borrow on it is to over borrow. That way the ball will stop by the hole and not go steaming past. A bit like that. You know I often talk about playing safe, playing conservatively, but that's not the case. If you've got a big wide fairway, take out your driver and spank it. If you give me three holes of 290 yards, I'll play each one differently according to the hazards. If there's no hazards, I'm taking driver. I'm getting as close as I can. And if the ground's hard in the summer, I might even make it. But if you put water down the right and three fairway bunkers down the left, as you might find in Thailand, well, I'm going to hit the thing that I trust the most. Well, that might even be my five iron and then a nine iron and get me par that way. So you play aggressive where you can and where you can't. I play conservatively and I'll rack up those pars. Par, 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 par. Now I've got a chance. I'll go for my birdie. But if it is tight, then I play tight. Cheerio.